All right, good afternoon everyone. So, main goal today, um, so I'm a sucker for Anderson power poles. You can see I'm using them on my soldering iron over here. Um, I ended up, did pretty much what everyone does with the uh, adapter on the FD891 and uh, ends up switching it over to Anderson power pole anyway um, and terminating onto there and then running from the fuses here out. The problem is that this is uh, kind of bulky. This is kind of on top of that. you are uh, got a lot of wires coming into here. Um, kind of condensing down to two anyway um, and once we open up the radio and get a look in there you'll see that there's only two wires in there anyway so it's kind of pointless um, so today we're going to be working on switching this FT891 to basically have Anderson power poles coming out the back uh, just straight up um, so just going over a few things you're going to need for this our Anderson power pole itself with the contacts uh, then we have this little piece right here um, so this is going to be 3D printed um, so if you can have a buddy print it, if you don't have a printer, um, source it. There's different websites online that you can 3D print, uh, and I'll be including the link down below for the uh, Thingiverse um, where this was printed from. Um, so it's just going to end up being three pieces. This is the back piece. Um, I did this one in PLA, um, and then I ended up, these ones didn't come out as clean, but they are definitely serviceable, definitely usable. But these are going to be the front pieces that actually hold on the, um, the power pole into the back of the radio. So from there, you're also going to need these itty bitty screws. Um, I got these at Ace Hardware, but I'll include the part number for those. I believe. Uh, from there, going into it, we've got these um, 16 to 14 gauge. So they're the blue ones, and then they are the uh, number four, number six um, rings terminals. And one thing, you can definitely do these with just wire strippers and crimp them. However, it's, I've found it's never as good. I've never had as good a luck with that. Um, I do, however, have had pretty good luck with these. Um, I think I got these off of either from Lowe's or Amazon or something. They essentially are the actual ratcheting um, crimpers that uh, give a consistent crimp every time. So those are nice. Um, and then for the actual Anderson power pole, we've got one of these. I believe the, what is the brand? This is a Iwis. It was an Iwis kit that I ended up getting. I think I got that off of... Uh, either Amazon or DX Engineering. Now, you can solder them. I personally like to crimp and solder them just to make sure they're uh, super, uh, super solid. So, don't, don't wanna lose my screws there. And then just a little uh, small pair of uh, snips. I like these ones. They're just great for getting a nice flat edge. Um, they're nice and sharp too, as you can see there. Show them on there. Nice and uh, solid. So, and then, Honestly, just to set a bit set, these, uh, I think I've just had these for gunsmithing stuff, but uh, nonetheless, they give you a little diagram, but uh, you want ones that accurately match these. You don't want to strip these. Um, these are going to be pretty hard screws to find, uh, just being in general. I've heard some say that they're Japanese Phillips, that you have to try and uh, match that, and that if you use an American Standard Phillips, you'll strip them out. I've been using, let's see here. So it's a PH1, it just says, that's all uh, that they have. On that one fits in and pretty much doesn't really wobble or anything, it just sticks right on in there. Oh, it actually pops out. So it's getting a decent amount of uh, surface contact in there, working totally fine so far. But moving on, um, you're also gonna need two pieces of wire. Um, you could do the math. I just ended up grabbing some 14 gauge um, red and black wire, um, should be plenty thick enough. Um, if you actually look at, like I said, the wires in here, they're not uh, not that thick. They're not uh, not too heavy of a gauge, to be honest, the ones actually going in there. Um, and it's quite a short run that you're running, so realistically having uh, super thick wires isn't gonna help much. Um, so for this, obviously you can see over here, um, I ended up having to take off the armalock rails um, for this, just so that we can access the radio. That's gonna be pretty obvious, but if you have something like that on there, you're gonna have to take that off, uh, and I'll be uh, kind of doing a little bit of uh, in-depth review on these a little bit, uh, a little bit later. All right, so starting off, you're gonna actually have a total of eight screws that you're gonna have to remove to get this lid off right here. Two on each side, and uh, here, 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 here. You do not have to take off the stand to do this. Um, I have already took off my stand just due to uh, the Armalock uh, cage won't fit with the stand on there, so you have to take that off. Um, so the stand, and then I've moved these, uh, these two little black rubber pieces were right up here. If you take those off or not, they'll just come off with the case. They don't go all the way through to the board. Make sure that you're doing it on the 
uh, side of the body that has this kind of uh, hump kind of thing, uh, the one with the actual stickers on it, the top of the speaker, you can leave that side. That side's not gonna be too pertinent right now. So going into it, we'll go ahead and pop these off real quick. Now as far as the screws and putting them off to the side and making sure you don't mix them up, uh, it really doesn't matter too much to be honest. The side screws are the same size, uh, they fit perfectly fine into the main body screws, so they're really uh, interchangeable. Alright, so now that we've got that done, we can go ahead and just pop this off, just come straight out. There's no uh, wires or anything connected onto here, so you don't really have to worry too much about that. Obviously be careful once you have this case off of all the components inside, you don't want to try and... Uh, break or bend, so we'll set that off to the side. Um, so now getting into it, where our key focus is going to be is right here. Um, and like I was saying, you can see those two wires, they're pretty small wires, pretty small contacts. Um, so these two, now make sure I usually, uh, you can either refer to the back to this video, um, which I can kind of get a close up for you. So as you can see, you're gonna be working with those two wires right there. Um, they go into that plug. Um, you can kind of leave everything else, make sure obviously you don't want to have this uh, plugged in while you're doing that. Um, also just to state, uh, I probably should have done that at the beginning of the video, but uh, I'm not liable for if you fuck up your own radio, um, that's going to be on you. Um, this isn't really that advanced of a topic, but nonetheless, like I was saying earlier, make sure to be annotating which side is which. Um, they're not very clearly marked on the board, I'm sure they are probably underneath the wires but uh, you definitely don't want to put them back on the wrong way. Um, if you want, try and either take a picture of yours or review back to mine. All right, so coming into here now, you're gonna to want to try and take off these two screws and not lose them. Keep the washers on there, set those off to the side. A thing that plagues FT891s to have wobbly uh, plugs. Uh, however, at this point, you're gonna need a uh, pliers, which I definitely forgot to grab. Either normal uh, slip joint pliers or uh, some needle nose you're gonna need. Um, just to be able to get into this side right here is kind of difficult um, because you have these fins in the way. So just make sure, so you're gonna have these prongs right here and right here. You wanna try and squeeze those together and push through. So with this side, you can obviously use some pliers, just kind of give it a nice little squeeze, get that side popped uh, through. Grab your needle nose pliers at this point. And then you're gonna basically just have to squeeze this side and pop it on through. Just a little bit, just enough to get it uh, in. At that point now, you can essentially pick up your wires, wiggle and pull it on through, um, and that should just come right out right there. So that is your actual connector. Um, I would recommend just if you uh, end up deciding to go away from this, or uh, down the road you want to try and sell the radio, return it back to its natural state. Just connect those together, put it back in the box it came in, but uh, you really don't need this anymore. So we can go ahead and put that to the side. Alright, so moving in here now, we're going to have to basically recreate that. Um, so we're going to have our number four to number six stud uh, blue connectors and we're just going to need to grab out two of these. So now we're going to want to grab some good quality wire strippers. I personally really like these uh, Irwin vice grip ones. They just work solid. Um, and don't do this over the radio where stuff's going to fall into the radio as we do not want stuff to stay in the radio after we close it up. It's like dropping the uh, 10 millimeter socket right down the intake. Don't want to do that. Make sure we twist. A um, good tip with these two is when you're twisting, don't just wrench it down, just twist and pull away. That actually kind of just helps keep everything straightened out and easier to fit into the actual, uh, actual connector. So now we just want to kind of work our way in there and get that nice and situated. Um, once we got a decent amount showing, we can go ahead and grab our ratchet and crimper set. Find it helps to uh, sometimes get the uh, actual connector just kind of held in by the jaws on the first click. And then you can insert and just give it the old pull check, make sure. So um, actually I think I might uh, solder these just to be on the uh, safe side. So now if you want to uh, skip past that, I'm just gonna, if you already know how to solder, then you know how to solder. But uh, then again, this is kind of uh, all encompassing for everyone video. All right, now I got that. Also, if you have a dog, make sure that they inspect your work and don't eat it, thank you. Thank you for your inspection work. Yeah, you're better than OSHA. You do still want to try and get it out hot, so, and actually not make it a cold solder joint. So we'll go ahead and get a little bit on the tip there. Get that nice and uh, soaked in. We're not trying to do too much solder. We don't want to try and make a mess here. And that should be good there. 
cool it down there on the uh, wet sponge. Also clean off some of that uh, some of that uh, rosin core, and you can see that ended up it did heat it up enough away to get the uh, little compression marks gone, but it's solid on there, so I'm not too worried. If you need to use the magnifying glass, sometimes that'll help. Um, I'm relatively young in the ham world, so my eyes are still good enough uh, to see stuff like that. But one day we all know I'll be there. Get some of that rosin off. Now our goal is trying to do some measurements. So essentially this is going to be mounted in like so, so we can go ahead and pop our sides on. And these uh, notches are just going to indent into the that part there. So now that we've got our setup uh, in the exterior housing here, we can go ahead and kind of just test fit it here. I don't want to try and measure out here. Um, so if we always do too much, we can always uh, take away. So we only want to kind of measure once, cut once. So I would say based off of do some redneck in it measuring here based off the fact that that is going to be ending red on left side here so we're going to end up going that to the right side all right now we want to strip this so this is going to be the fun part where we want to orientate this um, onto here in a rotation manner that it's not going to be binding up um, these power poles only fit into the housings one way and you want to try and make that as streamlined to where the natural wire bend already is. So with these power poles you always want to make sure you can look in here and see that little red lip. Now if you already work with power poles you already know um, but when you put the actual power poles together you want red on right. Um, you could really do whatever direction you wanted um, however industry standard the way everyone does it um, so that way if you go to plug into your buddy's battery pack or something um, pretty much the majority of the world put red on right with the lip being this little block chunk right here. You want that little bad Larry on the right side and facing up. So red on right, lip up. But this little lip right here has that little curvature to it. It's going to go in like that and clip into that upper portion. So you want to make sure that that does the same way regardless whichever way you orientate this into the radio housing. Um, so with the way I ended up just doing it, the way it popped together was red on bottom. So we want basically that to be as such. And the lip is going to be facing that way. So we want to go like that. So once you get it in there, you just give it a nice firm until it clicks. Comes out. So same traffic. It's going to be facing that way lip on the one side all right so now that we've got both of our legs here we'll go ahead and uh, solder these up and then uh, should fit to uh, pop right in there and be good until i usually run her about uh, 400 a little bit of solder i found out in the beginning helps uh kind of start the heat transfer get it in once you hear that uh, solid click and you can see on the uh, lip in there that it's fully in you're good uh, obviously we all make mistakes here so showing I uh, forgot to put that back part on uh, that back part is pretty important because it helps hold this fully in here um, and the problem is it's got holes in it so with these Anderson power poles um, on one hand you can slide those through however you cannot slide the number four to number six uh, terminals through these holes that won't just won't fit so easy fix with that if you ever need to with these Anderson power poles too, you just take a nice little pick. And you want to be careful, you don't want to do too much, but uh, you should be able to uh, pop those over those clips. And now it's going to get a bit more difficult. So yeah, normally you'd want to just get this slipped right on and uh, basically just pop the wires through here and then pop the wires into these. Um, you're going to kind of want to do this all at once because obviously you don't have a whole lot of room here. And this is a pretty tight fit so you're going to want to try and apply pressure here so you're not stripping out the plastic threads as you side these screws in. Basically just uh, for the camera's sake, just basically putting screws right through there. So. And one thing to be aware of too is this is just plastic and it's 3D printed plastic at that so once it's set uh, in there, it should be pretty good, but you just definitely don't want to strip out. It is just plastic, like I said. Well, now that I uh, fixed uh, my screw up going on here, replace those, re-terminalize those, and make sure, again, I would check your orientation. 
Your red should be on the left for this termination here. Snug down, again, it's got a lock washer. You don't want to try and snap it off the board here. So as far as the measurement, um, obviously it's already in the radio and I'm not going to pop it out now. So you, from your part right there, I would say you probably want the cable to be five to five and a half centimeters long or uh, right about two to two and a quarter inches. Um, probably be the right amount of length of wire there just to give you a little bit of leeway You can always just fold it up in so I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover on and then uh, From there we'll go ahead and test her out All right, so that's all the screws back in it now everything's good Definitely uh, less just bulk. It's just much more streamlined. I mean at this point We usually would want fusing but for testing. I'm just gonna pop her on in there and 13.7 volts and seems like we're good to go everything works fine showing probably could uh yeah either way the uh, voltage so hooking it up to a, a watt meter or anything isn't going to really change but nonetheless you can kind of see everything works pretty much fine no issues no lights and uh, flickering or anything like that and uh just much more streamlined now, of course, yeah, you'd want to have a uh, fuse going through here, but uh, not keying up or anything, running any serious amperage, so I think she should be fine. So, all right. Guess we'll go ahead and uh, get this put back in the uh, armor lock over here and get, the, uh, get it back in the man pack, get going, ready for our next uh, adventure.